first of all I'd like to start off with an apology because a couple of people mentioned last week's story was a bit washy and there was a lot of background buzzing noise. I didn't realise there was a fault on my end so it must have happened during the transfer so this week I will try to improve that and on the other note because it's the six weeks holidays it's a lot harder to record these things because there's a lot of background noise picking up on my mic such as kids I live quite near an airport so the airport you can hear constantly the airplanes going so I will try and reduce it as much as possible but if you hear anything like that I apologize in advance so without me babbling on anymore let's get right into it and let's start with Excalibur let's go Excalibur. Soon afterwards, Arthur was seated in the great hall at Camelot. I will bring peace to this land, he announced, and if any of my subjects are in trouble, let them come to me and I will right their wrongs. Just as he spoke these words, a young man burst into the hall. Give me vengeance, I beg you, he said to Arthur. Outside in the courtyard lies the body of a noble knight, Sir Mills, he was killed in a forest not far from here by a cruel knight called Sir Pillamore. This fiend lives in the Golden Pavilion and frights every knight who passes by. I beg you, bury my master and avenge his death. At this, a young squire called Brightfleet came forward. King Arthur, let me go, he blurted. Make me the knight so I may fight Sir Pillamore. Brightfleet was the same age as Arthur. The king considered that for a moment, then said, You are not old enough, or strong enough to fight such a knight. I beg you, let me prove my worth, Brightfleet pleaded. Before Arthur could reply, Merlin was beside him, whispering in his ear, One day, Brightfleet will make a great warrior. Do not let him fight today. Pillanor is the strongest knight in the land. He will certainly defeat him but Arthur could see the courage shining in Greifleet's eyes. I will make you a knight, he said, but promise me only to joust. Do not fight Sir Pillanor on foot. And when you have fought him, return to me straight away. I promise, Greifleet replied, and so Arthur knighted him, and straight away he went searching in the forest for Sir Pillanor. Before long, he spotted the golden pavilion, with a black horse standing beside it. In front of the pavilion was a large, brightly painted shield. Brightfleet struck the shield so hard that it crashed to the ground and Sir Pillanor came tearing out of the pavilion, looking as strong as a bear. Why did you strike my shield? What do you want? Sir Pillanor barked. To joust with you, shouted Brightfleet. You? Ha! For a mere boy. Still, I wish to joust with you, Brightfleet repeated. If you want to throw away your life, I'm not going to stop you, Sir Pillanor snarled, leaping up onto his horse. So, Brightfleet and Sir Pillanor rode away from each other, turned and charged. Sir Brightfleet struck Sir Pillanor's shield and it shattered. But Sir Pillanor's lance had pierced Brightfleet's side and he fell to the ground. Sir Pillanor jumped down from his horse and bent down over the young man. If he lives, he'll make a fine knight one day, he thought. Then he picked him up and threw him across his horse. The steed galloped off through the forest and made its way back to Camelot. Arthur had been watching all afternoon for Brightfleet's return. When he saw Brightfleet lying across the saddle, sorely wounded, he was furious with himself. I should never let him go, he thought. Sir Pillanor must be stopped. He set off at once, thundering through the woods to find Sir Pillanor. But as he rode through the woods, he came across Merlin being attacked by three robbers. Flee, coward, Arthur yelled, drawing his sword. The thieves scattered before him and he rushed to Merlin's side. Merlin, said Arthur, for all your magic you would have died if I hadn't been here. No, Arthur, said Merlin quietly. It is you who rides close to your death. 
be worth Sir Pellinore's strength and your own pride. But Arthur shook off Merlin's strange words and rode on until he came to the pavilion and the huge burly knight standing beside it. Why do you want to fight all the knights that come your way, he asked. It is my custom, Sir Pellinore replied. Any man tries to stop me meets his peril. I will stop you, said Arthur angrily, and I will defend my custom, Sir Pinanor replied, picking up his lance. They rode at each other at full tilt, and each struck the other so hard that their lances shattered, and both men crashed to the ground. For a moment they were both dazed, then they sprang to their feet, drawing their swords, each hacked at the other's armour, until it was cut to pieces and the ground was stained with blood. At nightfall, they rested. Arthur groaned, weak from his wounds, but he was determined to win. He thought of Bryfleet, lying injured at Camelot, and struggled to his feet. Let us fight to the end, he roared. With pleasure, Sir Pillanor snarled. Then Arthur swiped at Sir Pillanor with all his strength, but as he did, his sword broke in two. He was left holding the useless hilt in his hand. Ha! Now you are in my power, hissed Sir Pillanor. Die or yield. Death is one thing, said Arthur proudly. But to yield, never. He threw himself at Sir Pillanor and wrestled him to the ground. But in another moment, Sir Pillanor had wrenched off Arthur's helmet and stood over him, the tip of his blade pressed against Arthur's bare neck. Now I'll have your head, Sir Pillanor roared. But just as he drew back his sword to strike, his eyes rolled back in his head, and he stumbled backwards and sank to the ground. Gasping, Arthur scrambled to his feet and saw Merlin standing behind Sir Pillanor's limp body. What did you do? Arthur demanded. Is he dead? I would not have you kill him. Hush, said Merlin. Sir Pillanor is not dead, although you would have been, had I not been here to save you. He helped Arthur up onto his horse. Sir Pillanor is merely sleeping. In time he will awake. One day he will serve you. Now come with me. Merlin led Arthur to the hermitage, deep in the woods, where the old man tended to his wounds. In three days he was healed. Now you are ready to return to Camelot, Merlin told him. I am ashamed, Arthur replied sadly, for I have no sword. Do not worry, said Merlin. Follow me. And he led Arthur deep into the forest. Deeper and deeper they rode, along secret pathways, until at last a wide valley opened up before them. In the valley was a clear blue lake. The whole scene was still and silent. It felt to Arthur as if the air was thick with unseen spells. What is this place? he whispered, half afraid to speak. Beyond the lake is an enchanted isle of Avalon, which is full of spirits, Merlin told him. Now behold your sword. Arthur gazed across the water and saw a pale arm stretching out of the lake, holding a sword which was richly jewelled. Beyond it, a woman dressed all in white was walking across the water towards him. Welcome, sire, she said gently, and she reached his side. I am the lady of the lake. The sword is Excalibur. Do you wish to take it as the your sword and wear it? I do, said Arthur. The sword shall be yours in exchange for one gift, the lady continued. Tell me, and it shall be yours, said Arthur. Then he watched as a ship appeared and floated across the water towards him. Step into the ship, said the lady. I shall ask for the gift when the time comes. Arthur climbed on board the ship, and it began to glide across the water, as if it was guided by magic. When he reached the sword, he clasped the hilt, and at once the hand disappeared beneath the surface, and was seen no more. On their way back through the forest, Arthur was silent, overwhelmed by everything he'd seen. 
Which do you think is stronger, the sword or the scabbard? Merlin asked him, with the hint of a smile on his face. The sword, of course, Arthur replied. Once more you are wrong, said Merlin. The sword is full of deep and powerful magic, but the scabbard is more powerful still. While you have the scabbard with you, you will never lose a drop of blood. When he returned home, he showed Excalibur to his knights and told them of his fight against Sir Pilinor. Some of Arthur's knights wondered why Arthur had risked his own life to fight this dreaded knight. Others were glad to serve such a king who was as brave as his warriors. And that's the end to another one of Arthur's tales. Join me next week for the next instalment. And as always, thank you for listening to Storytime with She. See you next week. Bye!